Hey guys, Andy here. So obviously I like making videos um, and one thing that's quite handy to have in your sort of arsenal of cameras and such is an action camera. Um, I've had a few different ones over the years, mainly GoPros, but more recently I had the DJI Osmo Action, which I really liked. Um, one of the reasons I liked it was the screen on the front, which made it a bit easier if you're vlogging with it. <clears throat> um, so when I saw GoPro have finally made one of their own with a screen on the front, the Hero 9, and then I saw all the reviewers basically saying, this is a pretty amazing camera, I thought, I better try it. So here it is, the GoPro Black Hero 9, if that's in the right order, with the media mod, which is basically a little microphone on there, is what we're taking a look at today. So one of the first things you noticed uh, is just how big it is. If, where did I put my, I compare it now, it's in a case there obviously, but that is the DJI Osmo Action next to it. And granted, I've got the media mod fitted to the GoPro 9 at the moment, um, which makes it look bigger. It's quite easy to switch between the two. Just slides in and out. And you do have a sort of a clip on of oopsie so that's the that's the regular size sort of a springy clip at the bottom there just pulls off nice and easy slides in clips in at the other side and then you've got the quite nice microphone works quite well I'll give you a bit of a demo later obviously of that um, the actual GoPro so record button nice big sort of rubbery button on the top Nice big rubbery power button on the side, which also can rotate through the modes. We'll come to in a second. And underneath, I, I really like this idea that the sort of, um, I don't know, that bit <laughs> is built into the design of the actual GoPro. And there is a slight magnetic, I don't know if you can hear that, um, they sort of snap back into place. Um, there's probably the second thing I noticed that I quite liked is that both screens work at the same time. So you can see the rear screen is on, but also the front screen is on. So with the DJI Osmo Action, you have to swap between the two, which is quite a pain if I'm cycling along and I'm, I'm filming some bits of the bike where I'm using the back screen or I'm filming in front of me, and then I want to film a little bit of me. I've got to find the side button and hold down for the right amount of time, and then, yeah, okay. So it's quite nice that they they both work the same uh, at the same time. You can change the LCD brightness as well. I did then realize, oh, there's no auto brightness though, which would be nice, but not a, not a massive big deal. Um, you can see on the front, we get quite a bit of information as well. So we're in video mood, mode, it tells us what um, lens mode and things were in there as well. So we're in 2.7K, 60 frames per second, 
I'm not sure what that is. Um, we've got almost eight hours of space left on the memory card and we've got 95% of battery. So that's good information to be able to see from the front. On the back, we get that and more. So we get these side buttons which you can change. So, oh. so for example, this one, if I hold it down, we'll just scroll through what the different options are. So wind is what it's on. Oops, hang on. So I did find this a little bit weird. It wasn't always super responsive with raw. So I'm not going to talk about each one, but I'll just scroll through them so you can see them. Because these basically are all the different options that you get in the settings, pretty much. I'll leave it on the wind noise at the moment and then tap in the regular screen that comes back. So I have bit rate, which can be standard or high. Um, I have the lens mode, starts at super good. I'll go, I'll go through these with demos of the different lens modes. And then it's quite quick and easy to change what sort of mode you're in. And you can build your own modes. So I can switch to standard with the press of a button. Go back to activity mode. And I think I mentioned the side button can scroll you between photo, time lapse, and video. And again, you can see that on the front if you're pressing the buttons. Also, that front screen, so I'm on sort of full screen at the moment, but you can have it so that it puts the letterbox and you can literally see what you're filming. I prefer to have a nice big image, just if I'm filming myself, just make sure my, my face is right in the middle of that. Um, so if we move on to some of these sort of examples of what some of these modes do, we'll start off with one of the lens modes. If I press on that, oopsie, press too long tap, um, and I go to linear with horizon leveling. So this effectively just tries to keep, keep your horizon level, which again was something I thought, oh, I'd really like that. The amount of times I've been cycling and I've been waving around and, and I've, I've got it angled wrong and it comes around the horizons like that as I'm filming. So horizon leveling, really interesting. And actually, if you look at this demo of me waving the camera about, it's amazing. Do you not think that's amazing? That proper amazed me and stunned me how good the horizon leveling is. So I really like that feature. Definitely um, something that I will make use of. Uh, then we have the sort of the bit rate. So <laughs> I think actually me trying to show you the difference isn't gonna work because when I encode, one is at 60K, one's at 100K, but when I encode, I don't think I can do it higher than about 26K, so I'm possibly wasting our time showing you the examples of one side against the other. Personally, I can't really see a difference. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the different lenses, um, and I sort of, I'll explain which lens we're on as I'm doing it. This is all filmed with the media mod in place, so the microphone that you're hearing is the sound from the GoPro with the media mod. We're starting things off with super view, the uh, most wide angle. This is just wide angle. This is linear. And then this is narrow. So I guess all that's left is to have a look at some of the footage filmed with the device. I did most of it in the active mode, um, which is 2K. And then obviously I've dropped it down to 1080p in this encoding. Uh, 2K 60 frames per second. Uh, we'll also show you a quick bit of slow motion. So this is actually filmed in 240 frames per second. So then I can drop it down to 25%, which in theory still gives me 60 frames per second. And then I go down to 12.5%, which should still give me 30 frames per second. I don't know, I mean, it doesn't look as many as 30. I'm not sure, but that's what it should do in theory. But uh, generally, I think it looks very good. I'm gonna head out on the road on the bicycle. Look at the things I do for you guys, bearing the, the elements to get you some footage on the GoPro 9. Um, as you would expect, I think it looks really good. The colour accuracy there, I, th I don't think it's bad. The canyon seems really tough for some cameras to get the colours right. 
because they are it's kind of it is a reddish orange bike it looks maybe slightly orange there but generally uh, good reproduction slightly lower lights here in the gym and then brighter light outdoors um, while running so yeah I think the the quality is really very good um, I guess if I was to say I had any concerns sometimes the touchscreen isn't as responsive as I would expect it to be and I find I have to almost press and I think even earlier in the video I sort of held too long and it was selecting options um, and then perhaps the size of it I mean not that I've come up with any issues yet but part of the appeal of a GoPro action camera is how small it is and it's it is just getting a little bit bigger um, whereas I think you would rather it got a little smaller but at the same time if it's better battery life and better processor and stuff then I guess that's fine um, so I do really like the action cam the GoPro Hero 9 I love the amount of options you get with it would be it lenses or just well just options generally I love both screens are on all the time um, I like that when you press record when the device is off it will turn on and start recording but then when you stop recording it turns off again that's quite good uh, horizon leveling I just think I mean, that's crazy good that's so impressive the general stabilization obviously also is really very good uh, the quality of the footage is great too so I guess we're left with the question is it worth it now I paid about 379 for this with the accessories um, I think I could have got it for 329 if you sign up for the GoPro uh, subscription which you can cancel at any time so you basically I think you save yourself like a hundred pounds and then you just cancel it a few months later and you've saved the money um, so is it worth 329 pounds only really you can answer that um, and this is without the medium or the medium or the extra though I mean there are lots of other extras as well I should say um, f to, for whatever your needs are with the device be it waterproof be it yeah the medium mod or the super zoom the super lens or whatever it's called um, but is it worth it only really you can answer that because it depends you know how much money you've got to spend on an action camera if you can afford it I think it is fantastic and it might be a bit obvious to say this is the one to go for right at the moment it'll be interesting to see if uh, DJI come out with anything to challenge it I suppose so there we go let me know your thoughts in the comments down below but for now my name's Andy and I'll catch you all again soon